everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I want to look at how to create both a getter and a setter for a property on a JavaScript object in ECMAScript 5. Okay. Now, in the past, you couldn't do this. Essentially, if you defined a property, you could either assign to it or you could read from it, right? You couldn't customize what would happen when you assign to it and you couldn't customize what would happen if you read from it. So in this video, that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So what I've got open at the moment is a file which I've just created called Getter and Setup. And I've added it to, as part of the ECMAScript 5 samples. Now, this will be also available on GitHub, okay? But this should be a relatively short video, and you can probably just follow along anyway. So, what I'm going to do is, for this example, I'm going to create a person object, right? And this would be like a representation of a class. So, I'm going to use object literals for this. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a name property that has both a getter and a setter on it. And then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to create an age property that just has a getter. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you want to create a getter for a property of name, for example, we just type the word get. Like that, right? Then the name of the property. So you got get name. And this becomes like a little mini function. So you put the parentheses. Then you just go and do it as if you're calling a function, like so, but you're not really. And then you can return whatever you want here. So for example, whenever I call a getter on this person object, I'm just going to return my name for now. All right? And that is it. So now if I come down and I go person, uh, if I log out console.log, Person dot name and run this over in my node code here, which I'll make slightly bigger so you can see it. All right, if I run this now over here, let's make sure I'm in the right directory. Yep. So if I go node getter and setter, you'll see that my name has been emitted here, even though I haven't really set any value to it. It's determined that when I've called name, it's saying, oh, you mean to get the name. So you're talking about this getter property here, which returns me. All right. So that's how you do a getter. Now, if you want to do a setter, well, just underneath it, you just type set. All right. The same name, but inside the parentheses here, you put a value, right? And, you know, you can call that whatever you want. I just call it value. And then what I'm going to do for this sample is I'm going to actually do a console.log of the value. I'll say we are changing the name from uh, to, sorry, and then we'll append this dot name. Uh, sorry, not this dot name, value. If I do this dot name, it'll actually read this one up here. So we are changing the name value. So when I set the value, we're going to get a console output. All right. But whenever we read the value, it's always going to return Daryl. So no matter what we set in this situation, when we get it, it's going to return Daryl anyway. So let's quickly check this out. So if I come under here now and I go person dot name equals let's say Michael right and save what do you think is going to happen well what should happen is it should say we are changing the name to Michael right, so let's quickly try that and there you go we've got the getter call first which is the first console lock that we did here and then the second one is we're setting the name. So as a result of that, it's calling this big long line here. And it's emitting that out with the new value that we just added, which was Michael down here. So as a result, it says we are changing the name to Colin Michael. 
So, so far, so good. That's just how you can create a setter and a getter on an object. Now, the other thing I just want to quickly show is if we just add a getter on something else, like age, right? And for this, we'll just say, let's return 100. I don't know why I'm so old, but you get the point. Now, if I come in now and I go console.log person.age, like so, well, you think that it will return 100. And it should return 100. So if I come over, I'll just clear this. And I'll jump into no getter and set up. And you can see after the first two lines, the third one is 100. So it is actually returning the age. However, what do you think will happen if I now go person.age equals, we'll say, 56. I think that's how old Michael Jordan is. No, 54. Uh, I believe Michael Jordan is 54. 1963, 2017, yeah, 54. So, as you can see now, what is this going to do? Is this actually going to break? All right, because we haven't specified a setter up here. Let's check, quickly check that and run the code. And it doesn't break. Okay, It just basically ignores it. Or it sets it to a property of age all right, that's hidden behind the scenes. But if I now come in once again... And console lock the top one, all right, thinking, or well, maybe we've changed it, and run it. You'll see it still pushes out a hundred, even though we tried to change it to fifty-four here. So it's quickly, it's correctly detected the getter. So this will always be called every time we try to get the value from the person or oh, person object. Now, this is one. Um, one way to create getters and setters. What if, for example, we wanted to have something that inherited from person and we still wanted to have these getters and setters in place? Can we do this? The answer is yes, but not in the way that you would think. Okay, so for example, I'm going to use prototype, right? Now, if you all know JavaScript, I can create an object here and go. Um, player equals, uh, we can say some object literal of some sort, and we'll put in, you know, uh, position equals shooting guard. Right. And just say I want to specify a prototype that points to this player, right? If I come down, I now go player dot prototype. You know, is equal to player a uh, person. Right. Under normal circumstances, with anything else, what would happen is player would now generally have a name and it would have an age. But what happens here if I go player dot name equals? Uh, we'll say Kobe. Okay. Now, based on the fact that I've given the prototype of person to player here, it usually would mean that we have, you know, we have these three methods here. But do we really? You know, so what should happen based on what we've changed here is now we should have, we are changing the name to Kobe. Does this happen? No, it does not. It doesn't even pick it up. It doesn't even understand it. In fact, if I'm now to go console.log player.name, what it's in fact going to do is it's going to spit out Kobe. Now, that's not right either because player.name should spit out Daryl. So it has not inherited these getters and setters, right, from this object. But what if we want an object that does inherit from this object here, as a, it sets as a prototype? Can we do that? Well, we can. We just can't use the prototype option. What you can do in ECMAScript 5, and I'll be talking about this a lot more in another video, is you can use a method called object.create. 
and basically object.create allows you to pass in a prototype object of which your current object is going to inherit from. So I can say var player two is now equal to object dot create and I'll pass in person because the person represents the prototype that we want up here. Right? These are the methods and prop oh, these are the getters and setters we want as part of our object. So this now should have the same getters and setters as was defined in person. So let's try that right now. Let's do the exact same thing we did up here. All right. So for example, I will add a position. So I can just go player to dot position equals shooting guard. All right. So it's the same object or it's the same way of defining it as I did here. It's just that the only difference is I used object.create first and then I defined a property. Okay. However, that's not really important at this point. What is important is what do we get when we now set the player dot name once again to Kobe. Alright. Do we get the same issue we had here? Or do we get we are changing the name to Kobe? Let's have a look, shall we? Save that. Jump over, clear this. And, oh, sorry, I have a slight error. This needs to be player two. I'm thinking I'm getting the same result here, which I shouldn't. So if I run it again, now we're seeing that we are changing the name to Kobe. So as a result of calling object of create, and passing in the object up here as a prototype, we've now inherited all these getters and setters. Okay, and just to prove that, let's do a couple more. Let's go console.log player two dot name and console.log player two dot age. So by rights, we should get Daryl and 100. Okay, because we're inheriting what's up here. So one more time, I'll clear this once more. And there you go. It's pulled out my name, which is Daryl, and it's pulled out an age, which is 100. Okay? So that's all I wanted to achieve in this video. I wanted to show you how to set up a getter property and a setter property for the same name so that we can change the behavior of what happens behind the scenes when we assign it to something or when we read it from somewhere we can change that full behavior using get a, a get and set right what i also wanted to show or what i also showed was how we can still inherit that behavior using object.create as opposed to using the prototype on an object okay which doesn't take advantage of gets and sets at the moment so that's it. That's all I wanted to achieve in this video. Uh, so in the comments, let me know what you think. In the next video, I'm going to look more at this object class and all the new kinds of methods that are on this that are static and basically what they all do for us and how we can generate things like properties that are only write-only and read-only and some things that are only enumerable and so on and so forth, okay? But I'll get to that in the next video. So I'll see you then.